to look here. This is one example. And in this example, I am going to use two methods. Uh, uh, the same, what we use for 2D, where we split the uh, force into two components, and also a vector uh, method. Okay, so two methods. So, what you've got here is that the force F acts at the end of the uh, angle bracket shown here, that this is your angle bracket, which is fastened to the wall here. Determine the moment of the force about point O. That's my point O. I need to find moment with respect to this point O uh, caused by this force. Okay, so let's do the 2D analysis, which I call skill analysis. So I had a force vector here. If I go back, we look at this. That's my force line going straight. And I need this perpendicular distance. Here, this D. So the first question is, can we find D? Is finding D easy or not? Can we find this distance D? What do you no, think? No. 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 It's difficult. It's, it's not possible easily to find it. So the other way is then we split the force into two components. So we've split it in two components. Remember, the original force is in this direction. So it will have a component here, which is this. Which, sorry. Oh, come on. Which is uh, this component is this one, and the other one is acting downward here. So I've got two components now being split, and I want moment at this point. So if I will first take any one, I can take this one first. So that's this force line into our first line and its perpendicular distance from point O. And that distance is given here. So in simple words, I've got force into this distance and I'm calculating moment at this point. And the tendency for the rotation is in this direction. So that's anti-clockwise for my this force. Now, let's look at this component here. I've got this force line acting downward, and I want the perpendicular distance from it. The perpendicular distance is given here. So the tendency of rotation for this one is to rotate it in this direction. So that's clockwise. So the, the moment created by this force is negative, and the moment created by this force is positive. And you can see uh, the answer given here. <coughs> Excuse me. So look, he put a negative sign here. There's no negative sign here because the direction has been mentioned. Best ways you stick with this one. So you realize that we cannot find directly the perpendicular distance. That was not possible. So the easiest way out was to split it into two components. And we had the distance for any distance for each force component. OK, so, so there are two, two ways, remember, in 2D, direct or splitting force into the components. Now let's look at the third one. It's called the vector analysis. This is important because in 3D, you're going to use vector analysis. The scalar approach is a bit difficult. You can apply. But it will be a bit lengthy, and uh, it will take more time. But let's look at the vector analysis. Uh, what's that? So what's vector analysis? We've got the same example. This is the same example, OK? I haven't changed the example. Look, it is the same example, very same example. This time, we are taking this vector here. OK, so let us look at the vector analysis. Same example, we've got vector here, OK? so. So the first thing is we find the position vector from O, I'll call this, I'll call it A. So position vector R O A from O to A. I've got the dimensions given. So this is my position vector now for the vector R. And uh, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> The the F we had already calculated this component. You have seen it here. The the components of F. 
Now this one, this one is in I and is positive. This one is J and is in negative because it's downward. So we've got the two components. So the two components are here. So now I've got my, my position vector in vector form uh, uh, and I've got my force in vector form also. Then I do for the moment is R cross F. That's where I want to bring you. We've got the cross product of uh, uh, position vector into force. That is basically your moment vector. This is where I wanted to bring you. So remember, the moment vector is equal to R, which is the position vector, cross F, which is the force vector. You have to remember this. So using this approach, I have already got my R in Cartesian vector form, and I've got my F also in Cartesian vector form. I do R cross F. I am not going to teach you matrices, okay? That is like too low level now for you all. You've already done this. So R cross F, I've got my answer out here. So now remember three ways of finding a moment. You've got the direct way where you've got the force, where you've got force line into perpendicular distance D. If this D is not available, then you can split your force into components and then look for perpendicular distance of each component. And if that's not available and it's in the vector form, then you can use this approach where it says that the uh, moment vector is equal to position vector cross F. So it's position vector cross F. Uh, so remember this, uh, position vector moment again is uh, F cross R, am I right? No, it's R cross, R cross F. R cross, it doesn't matter if it's R cross F or it's negative it's neutral. F cross R. Does it matter? The cross product uh, negative uh, neutral. Uh, yes, negative. yes, Direction yes, order. gentlemen. It is not equal, not equal. Remember that, gentlemen. Seems like you've done your schooling in a relatively better way. This is not equal to that, okay? Good, so, so it means my moment, remember moment vector is R cross F. Remember that, it's R cross F. Is that clear? Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, so question is, my moment is also a vector. So it means there's a direction. You do know moment has got direction. It's either clockwise or anti-clockwise. 